Namaskar. I am Dr. Rusmika Bujar Borua, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Sanskrit, Nalbari College, Nalbari. Today, I am going to present a paper on trade and commerce during the Vedic times for the uh, conference WEX 2024. Here, I am going to <clears throat> present my uh, paper. Uh, now, I will uh, discuss about the main points of the paper. So, trade and commerce were the important aspects of Vedic economy. The Vedic Aryans were well versed both in internal trade and trade with foreign countries. Vanij was the term used for trader or merchant in Rigveda Sanhita. Trade and commerce were regulated by a group of people called Pani. So, Pani played an important role in trade and commerce during the Vedic periods. Uh, in the fourth mandala of the Rig Veda, it is seen that the word free is used and the meaning of the word free is to purchase or to buy. So, it can be inferred that at that time, purchasing of things was done. All exchange was done by the system of barter, that is, the exchange of one thing for another. As there was no use of coin, so barter, barter system was prevailed. We all know that in barter systems, things are exchanged for another. This is Vedic uh, economy. In uh, to discuss about Vedic economy, it uh, we should know that. Uh, Atharva, in the age of Atharva Veda II, barter system was still exist. Due to the absence of coins, the barter system was pursued by the exchange of commodities. The unique and value of exchange were cattle, soma plant, grains, etc. Gradually, pieces of gold called Nishko were used as means of exchange. Hence, Nishko was the preliminary uh, unit that was used for uh, exchange. Shulka was the term used to mean price. In the Vedic period, loans and rates of interest were also well known. Panis were described as asserer who used to lend money to the needy one. Reference to date contracted at dice is made with in the Rig Veda. It is to be noted that in the famous Akshashukta, the result of the non-payment of a date is seen which may force the dicer into slavery. It is a very, uh, very, it is a very important sutta of the Rig Veda, which belongs to the tenth mandala. There were several kinds of routes for transport and communication. Trade networks were run by means of river and land sea transport. So, uh, water transportation was mainly existed at that time. Bullocks, steeds, camels, dogs, etc. were used to export agricultural products. Both inland and foreign trade were built for import and export. It is also important that both inland and foreign trade were existed. Reference to seagoing ships and merchants who undertook sea voyages in search of wealth indicate the existence of trade with the countries across the seas. It is mentioned in the first mandala of the Rig Veda. So at that time, important trade items were grains, textiles, metals, precious stones, various stones were used at that time for different tasks. Crafts that were uh, prevailed in the early Vedic age and later Vedic age were weaving cloths, metal workers made weapons, implements, and uh, they implements ornaments. Oyos, that is metal mentioned in Rig Veda, was copper or bronze. Iron was also in uh, used in large quantities. Crafts such as leather working, making of jewelry, chariot making developed during that very period. The main occupations that was uh, running in the Vedic uh, age was physician. Research was the term used to uh, mean physician. Pottery, that is Kalasha, Kumbha, Uppa were made uh, uh, within the uh, skill of pottery, carpentry, goldsmith, 
goldsmith uh, the word karmara was mentioned in the veda which means goldsmith blacksmith used to make uh, horseshoe razor weapon different kinds of weapons etc garland making was also uh, in use at that time the word straws uh, the word straws sanskrit term straws was uh, used uh, in several uh, places of the river Veda uh, by which we can um, infer that garland making was in use. Weaving, hunting, tanning of leather was in exercise. Barbar was also the main occupations at that period. Now we, uh, we have to know what are the contributions of trade and commerce to economic growth. Uh, as a contribution of trade and commerce to economic growth, we can say about the urbanization and emergence of complex society that develops mutual interdependence between various parts of country and neighboring, prov neighboring provinces. Uh, it also, trade and commerce also develops connections to other civilization. Now, uh, uh, we know that every activities have some social, uh, social influences. The influence of trade on social structures in the Vedic periods where emergence of new social classes, that is merchants, artisans are coming with trade and commerce. And then the very important point is uh, the influence on caste system. Trade and commerce has a a very big influence on caste system that is on the brahmana kshatriya vaishya and sudra now we can come uh, come to the conclusion that uh, the economy of the country was rural one at the vedic period the economy was mainly rural the greater part of the population depended on agriculture cattle breeding and handicrafts for their livelihood during that period, there was a sense of morality in earning money. We know that in the period of Veda, mainly in the period of Rig Veda, morality occupies an important place. So in the place of trade and commerce also, moral morality exists. Thus, there existed a well-balanced economy in the days of the Vedas. Uh, thank you.